Hi everyone, I'm Gron K and welcome to the sixth part on the video series of how to use Action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. In the previous video, we started to create a brand new composite. The first thing that we did was create a new background and bend it in 3D space. Now let's go ahead and add a light object into the composite and start shading the 3D environment. Currently in action, the image objects in the 3D environment are not affected by any light sources. To make the 3D environment aware of lighting, we need to go to the Setup menu. Under the Rendering tab, we will find the Shading button which is currently off. When we enable shading, the environment now becomes aware of any lights in our scene. If there are no lights in the 3D composite, Action will apply a generic lighting system that will still give general light shading to objects within the 3D composite. To add a light object into the 3D composite, we need to use the Action node bin. Press the node bin menu located above the media list menu in the interface. Here we have the node bin full of tools and objects that we can use in the composite to create different effects. Just for your extra information, you have tabs above the node bin that filters the nodes for easy access. So we'll switch to the object tab, this gives us the most generic tools we can use in the 3D composite. In the list of nodes, we will find a light node. Double clicking on this node adds the light into the scene. In the schematic view, double click on the light node to bring up its object menu. For a detailed explanation of the lights and all of their functions, please view the other videos I've produced on lighting through the Autodesk Smoke Learning Channel. In this case, we'll use the light to develop the overall look of the background. First, in the object menu, we bring down the intensity of the light to approximately 75%. Secondly, we'll also adjust the light spread to approximately 30 degrees so that the light turns into a spotlight. We can alter the shape of the light by changing the light type from point spot to ellipse area. Now we can increase the horizontal area of the light by giving it more of an oval shape. Finally, we'll animate the light to change its distances from the surface. To the right of the interface, we can enable Auto Key. Make sure that we're on the first frame of the composite, and the light's first position, we can apply this by pushing the light further away from the background. This is done by adjusting the Z position of the light. Basically, the light is now behind the camera. Now going to the last frame of the composite, we can reposition the light so that it moves closer to the background and this ultimately affects the shading. Scrubbing the time bar back and forth shows the animation. Please note that the Z position slider for the light is now color coded. This indicates animation on the channel. A yellow line indicates a keyframe at the current frame. A blue line indicates animation, but we're not currently on a keyframe at the current frame. We'll look a bit more at animation later, but for now, please disable auto key to the right of the interface. Right, we're now ready to import in that Photoshop file. In post-production, it's quite common to get lots of design elements, and Photoshop files are quite common. Just so that you know, in order to prep a Photoshop file for smoke, we need to do a few things. Firstly, all the adjustment tools need to be baked into their respective layers. All text tools need to be rasterized as well. But the good thing 
is that all the blending modes that you may be using should come across. Back in the first frame of the composite, we'll switch back to the Action Node Bin menu. Amongst the nodes, we will find the Import node. Double-clicking on the Import node launches us into a browser. At the bottom of the interface, we would select the file type to import. In this case, we set it to Photoshop. We would navigate through the file system until we locate the Photoshop file. This file can be located anywhere on your Mac system. I have mine on the desktop, and I'll also bookmark this location for easy access. So here it is. Just by selecting the Photoshop file, it is imported into the Action Composite. Looking at the schematic to the left of the interface, we can use the navigator to pan over to the imported nodes. Pretty good. You can see that the image objects retain their names they were given in Photoshop, and they all have access nodes ready for repositioning. So there were three layers in the file, a logo, a completed ring, and a quarter ring. Let's replicate the quarter ring and make it a whole circle. Firstly, we want to focus on that layer and nothing else. With that said, we can select its axis in the schematic. To the right of the interface, we can press the Solo button. This makes it much easier to work with the selected layer. So switching the object menu, we can use the center controls of the axis menu to reposition the center. We'll use the X and Y center sliders to move the axis' center point into the bottom left-hand part of the image object. This means that when we rotate the image object, it rotates on its bottom left corner. Turn the Solo button off, and we will be able to see all the objects in the 3D composite. Now, we need to have four identical quarters to complete the circle. I am going to show you a powerful trick that we use in everyday action to solve challenges. This is called instancing. Firstly, drag a line between the connection to break the connection between the nodes. We'll now switch back to the node bin menu. Click and drag the axis node from the node bin into the schematic. We'll perform this operation four times because we need four instances of the quarter ring. Now parent each newly created axis node to the original axis of the quarter ring image objects. So now, it looks like we're building a puzzle in the schematic. Actually, it's a roadmap. The four parent nodes we now have all are instanced to the child nodes they are connected to. To make this very clear, double-click on the second node of our Axis Quartet. In its object menu, we can put in a value of 90 degrees into its Z rotation. Select the third node in the schematic view, and we'll adjust the Z rotation to 180 degrees. Finally, We'll select the fourth node in the schematic and set its Z rotation to 270 degrees. So each duplicated instance of the quarter ring is rotated by 90 degrees, and this creates a completed circle. Any changes made to the parent axis below will update in every instance. Any changes to the parent nodes will affect only the individual instance, depending on how they have been connected. Instancing access nodes is great for versioning and replicating. However, if you'd like to have a different image in each of the quarter rings, you will need to use separate image objects. In the next video, we'll be looking at access parenting, 3D positioning, focused lighting, and more animation. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, 
or you'd like to download the free 30 day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in part seven.